Since the Uvalde school shooting, which left 19 students and two teachers dead, I have implored everyone, regardless of what you think about gun control laws, to do the one thing we can all do immediately. Appreciate and recognize the warning signs and red flags that so often lead to a mass shooting, and certainly existed with a guy in Uvalde. The unhinged statements, the social media posts, the obsession with violence. Just this morning, eight Kansas City area school districts canceled classes and activities after police there received an anonymous report of a Snapchat post which contained a threat from a 19-year-old man they later learned was Treshawn Hardridge, according to just released complaint warrant. He said in the post, quote, mental health is important. I'm going to start killing people, mass murdering. Don't test your luck with me. Never know. You might be the reason for the next big event. The anonymous reporting party was able to identify the post to have come from Hardridge. He's in custody tonight, charged with one felony count of making a terrorist threat. I have long felt that the potential tragedies that were stopped don't get the attention they deserve. The media too often just focuses on the aftermath of the worst incidents, the death and the, the heartbreak, and not enough on the ones that were stopped. And the heroism sometimes of ordinary citizens, like in Kirkland, Washington, on Sunday, 18-year-old student Solomon Levin arrested and charged with several counts of harassment after online threats he made were reported to law enforcement. The charges at first misdemeanors, but yesterday, Prosecutors upgraded the charges to felonies against the high school senior. Among the disturbing threats he posted on social media, quote, if you stay out of line, you'll end up like those kids in Uvalde, and I'm suggesting I should kill you. Meanwhile, Washington State's Tacoma Police Department tweeting earlier this month, since May, TPD made five arrests for kids with guns on school grounds and one for threats to a school. TPD encourages parents to talk to their kids about what to do if they experience unsafe situations at school, hear threats, or witness an assault. Hashtag, if you see something, say something. The issue also on New York's Long Island, where since Uvalde, there have been at least five reported threat arrests, including in Comac, where a 17-year-old student was charged after he made a post saying, quote, I'm going to remake Texas at CMS. The principal of that school, Comac Middle School, called 911 after becoming aware of the threat. Good for him. <clears throat> Last week, we told you about a situation in Menifee, California, where the police department got a tip about a 17-year-old who was sending social media messages about, quote, shooting up a school and kids. They also got information that he was harassing other students and that he had a gun. Detectives obtained a search warrant and arrested the juvenile with a ghost gun, a pair of brass knuckles. The wake of Uvalde, law enforcement, school officials, counselors, a lot of people speaking up more and following up when we see or hear something disturbing. Look, I can't tell you how serious each of these threats actually was. I can tell you that creating awareness about the importance of reporting the threats is critical, as is making the ones who say these things aware of the possible consequences. So while lawmakers continue to discuss possible legislative solutions, I salute them for looking at bipartisan compromises, this stuff Reporting threats and scary behavior is going to be much more effective than any legislation they're considering. Joining me now to discuss some of these recent arrests, the chief of the Seattle Police Department, Adrian Diaz, and Michael Tabman, a former Kansas City-based special FBI agent in charge. Uh, thanks to both of you for coming on. All right, Chief, let me start with you. Talk to us about what happened to lead to the arrest of that Kirkland man. Yeah, so they received a threat uh, online. There was an image of a gun, and the officers, uh, detectives, you know, followed up on that work, uh, were able to identify who the, the suspect was and make that arrest. And so those are really important key cases to identify uh, that social media post, the handle on it, and the images that associate with the criminal behavior. But, Chief, I'll bet that, you know, your department, for example, is probably getting a lot of calls, right? A lot of possible threats and now you have to go through and figure out okay which ones are real and which ones are just you know talk or jokes or whatever the case may be right actually just a couple of days ago we had our arson bombs uh out because there was a threat of a potential uh bomb in one of the schools and so it's it does take considerable resources but we want to make sure that we're doing it because we want a safe environment for our kids yeah no look 
That's what police work, good police work, is all, is all about. Uh, Michael, what can you tell us about what happened in this Kansas City area issue this morning? Well, this morning in Kansas City, Dan, fortunately, we had someone do exactly what you refer to the opening. They saw something, they said something. Uh, they saw this threat, it was very explicit, it didn't really leave much to the imagination. They reported to law enforcement. Law enforcement brought in, local law enforcement brought in the FBI. They able to track this individual, find him, and place him under arrest on the local charge for making a terrorist a threat. So, as the chief was saying, we have to take each of these threats seriously, and every time we do, we are taking less chance of having something happen. Uh, we know that more than half the time, a mass shooter leaks that information, as you were saying, the red flag. So if we respond to as many as we can, the odds are in our favor that we may stop the next shooting. And, and I think that that's, that's a critical point here, is that in almost every single one of these cases, right, we go back and we look and we say, oh, this got missed and that got missed. And how did nobody do anything about this and that? And, and Chief, I, I think that Uvalde has created more awareness about this, right? Reminding people to recognize those warning signs. Are you seeing that? It, it, we are. And when you start to think about any level of shootings where people are, they find themselves separating from, you know, their friends, their families, and people all said, uh, gosh, you know, we saw all the signs that they were acting out. They were, you know, struggling with mental health. And we just thought that there was maybe an episode. Um, they didn't think that they were going to lead to this, you know, mass shooting. Michael, what do you say to those who say, yeah, but now law enforcement's overreacting, right? Now they're going in and they're arresting too many people. And this is overkill. What do you say to them, Michael? I would say, Dan, let's look at how the world has changed in the recent years due to mass shootings. If you would ask me this question when I was a police officer 40 years ago, I might have answered differently, as the chief might have answered differently as well. Uh, it was a different world. Uh, we would look at the threats and say, well, who made it? And in what context? And how specific was it? Now we see that we can't make those judgments up front. We know there's a threat. We have to go in there and take action. And what we can measure, Dan, is how many times law enforcement has gone to someone and maybe deterred a shooting because that person now says, oh, all right, my gig is up, they're on to me, I'm not gonna do it, and had a chance to rethink it. We can't measure that. So this concept that they're overreacting, I, I'd be surprised if anyone was saying that now in light of everything that has happened just in the last few months in our nation, how many people have been killed. I think the police officers now have learned how to respond, just like we learned to respond to school shootings better because we had to. And also the point I, I wanna you know, build upon what the chief said, is that also in more of these cases, we have found that at least one person knew about the intent of the person mm. to do it. The problem we have is the person who knows it or the people to whom he's displaying these red flags are close in nature, generally friends, families, colleagues, and they're just maybe incapable, not intentionally, but unable to see that this person could be a mass shooter. It's hard for us to look at someone we have a relationship with and envision that. So you get the police in there, people who can make uh, this call from an independent perspective, and I think it'll do us a world of good every time the police go out and confront someone who's made a threat. You know, I want, I want to come back to this situation in Washington, Chief. Uh, this 18-year-old student, Solomon Levin, arrested. Talk to us about how the citizens were involved in this, right? I know about the law enforcement side. Talk to us about the citizens' side on this. You know, there's no way that a police department can monitor every youth social media account to understand whether they're going to, you know, potentially commit a level of mass violence. And so it's important for the community to step up. It's important for the peers, the youth's peers to be able to identify and see these signs and be able to capture those images uh, when there's a threat of a gun that's, you know, posted online. Because if you use Snapchat or some of these other different uh, social media sites, uh, that image is, can be sometimes gone by the time we actually are, are there wanting to investigate that. Yeah. So you need those peers to be able to grab that, grab that information. And Michael, what do you make of my point about the media coverage that, you know, the media focuses enormous amounts, understandably, when there's a shooting, right? Days and days and days and days of coverage. But when the cops do good police work, right, when people figure out how to stop something, eh, gets a little mention here and there. 
but no one really focuses on it. I think that's part of the problem, is that, that we need to also focus on the times when the police got them, when we were able to stop them. And I, that's why we continue to do these sorts of segments on this show, because I just think it's not talked about enough. No, it's not. And I think in general, law enforcement doesn't get enough credit in the media for the good things they do and that we don't hear about and all the suicides they stop and and potential shootings and violence they they intervene on. Uh, but I think it's important, Dan, something you're pointing out that when we cover the shooting by we, I mean, you, the media, when the media covers it, it is in essence lionizing that shooter. Because no matter what we say, we say we're not going to mention his name or we're not going to talk about him. But we always do because everybody wants to know. So now we are giving that shooter a platform mm. to be heard, maybe in death, but he couldn't be heard in life be mm. prior to the shooting. I think it's so important that we not do that. We have to stop reporting on the shooter, giving his message any kind of meaning, giving anyone motivation to commit a crime so they get that message out. And, and make it clear they won't get that attention. Maybe that will deter them. But I think the, uh, the constant talking about them. I was a special agent in charge, yeah. the FBI, uh, at the Red Lake High School massacre. Mm -hmm. And I know I yeah. see people asking about that for weeks and weeks, and I would speak about it. And months later, there was so much violence. If I mentioned Red Lake, no one would know what I was talking about. Because yeah. it, it's surpassed by all the other violence that we tend to lionize these people. So I yeah. think... You are right. Let's focus you know, on the good and let's ignore the bad. Well said, uh, Michael. Thank you, Michael Taubman and uh, Chief Adrian Diaz. Appreciate you coming on the show. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.